Hello and welcome everyone to the Varsity Tutor Star Course Series, where I'm here in the year 2021, where I can come to you through the internet here, but we are very fortunate to have a chance to go back in time today. Thanks to our friends at the Maryland Center for History and Culture, uh, we have a time traveler from 1895 here, Miss Emma Watkins, a school teacher from over 100 years ago, here to tell us all about what life was like back in 1895, or I guess from her perspective, what life is like in 1895. And we want to make sure you get all of your questions answered, you get a chance to really engage in what it was like and, and what it must be like for her in 1895. So a couple of things before I turn it over to her. Um, she's not going to understand a lot of this, but you do have a chat panel to the right of the video. I don't know if she understands any of those words, um, but please use it. She's going to ask you some questions and uh, you can type in to, uh, to participate that way. Also, if you have any questions for her about what life is like, anything from what school is like, what food is like, what technology is like, even like what the bathroom is like, ask those questions and I'll interview her with your questions in the last 10 minutes. She also doesn't understand what Instagram or a digital camera is, but you guys do. So make sure you've got a camera nearby in about 35 minutes or so. We'll give everybody a chance to lean into the screen, take a picture to remember your time traveling adventure by. And if you upload it to Instagram, tag the Maryland Center for History and Culture and Varsity Tutors. You'll be entered to win a spot in an after school club with Varsity Tutors. Uh, but with that, she's been waiting a long time, or maybe not. It's just 1895 to her, but this is a class over 100 years in the making. So let me turn it over to your teacher for today, Miss Emma Watkins from 1895. Thank you so much, Mr. Galvin, and hello, everyone. My name is Miss Emma Watkins, and as Mr. Galvin has said, I am visiting you from the year 1895. Uh, real quickly, um, can you tell me what year it is for all of you? And I heard a funny word that you can just type it into the chat. I'm not sure what that means, but tell me, what year is it? Oh my goodness, it's 2021. So that means I have traveled more than 100 years into the future to speak to all of you. And I'm so excited to be here today. So today we are going to be talking about some similarities and some differences between my life and your life. And uh, before we dive in, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about myself. So I am visiting you from the state of Maryland, and I am a school teacher. So I'm so excited to be still teaching in the future here. So if you wouldn't mind, please tell me what state do you all live in? Tell me in the chat, what state are you all from? I'm seeing lots of different answers come through. I think I saw New York. I think I saw California. Ooh, maybe Colorado too. So you all seem to be from all over the United States, which is wonderful. So uh, again, I'm in Maryland, which means I live along the East Coast near the Atlantic Ocean. And I'm very excited that I get to visit so many friends from so many different places. Now, like I said today, I am visiting you from the year 1895, and we're gonna talk about some things that are similar and what is different. So real quickly, can you just tell me in the chat, what does the word similar mean? And I'm gonna challenge you all to find that definition without using the word similar in the definition. What does the word similar mean? Yeah, it means something is the same or something is kind of alike. Nice job. So we're gonna be talking about some similarities. We're also going to be discussing some differences. So again, tell me in the chat, what does the word different mean? And again, try to define the word different without using the word different. So if similarity means something is the same, different means, yeah, nice job. Something is not the same. Something is not alike. So they're opposites. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What is similar and what is different? And already I have a feeling uh, what I'm wearing compared to what you all are wearing looks a little bit different. So let's talk about what is different about what I am wearing compared to what maybe you all are wearing. Thank you. 
what is different? Ooh, yeah, I see someone has pointed out, I'm not wearing a lot of color in my clothing. So my clothes, um, I've got this darker jacket on, I have a blue skirt and a white shirt. And uh, this is because school teachers in 1895, we have a very strict dress code and we have to wear darker colors. So we wear a lot of black and white or maybe some navy blue and white. So that's what I'm wearing today is a navy blue. Now, I want you to, if, especially if you're in a classroom, look at your teachers, look at the people who educate you and tell me, is this what your teachers wear? Do they have to wear only dark clothing or black and white clothing? Just put a yes or no in the chat. Oh, I'm seeing lots of no's. It sounds like your teachers are very fortunate that they get to wear kind of whatever colors they would like. So let's see, what are some other differences that you notice about my clothing and your clothing? What are some other differences we're seeing besides the color? Oh, I see a lot of you are pointing out, I am wearing a hat. I have a nice hat on with a nice fluffy feather in the front, has some ribbon here in the back. And somebody tell me, uh, just put a yes or no, do you wear hats like this in 2021? Hmm, I'm seeing lots of no's, maybe a yes or two. So can you, just in the chat, um, do your best to try and describe what hats look like in 2021. What do hats look like in 2021? I'm very interested. Ooh, I see that someone has described that it has like a round top. Okay. Ooh, and someone else has added that it has a bill at the front. Nice job. Now in 1895, those are called baseball caps. So tell me in the chat, a quick yes or a no, is there still baseball in 2021? Oh, I'm seeing lots of yeses. That's wonderful. Yeah, so that is something that is similar. Uh, I enjoy seeing a baseball game on the weekends and maybe that's something that you all enjoy as well. So I like to wear my hat when I am going out and about during the day, when I'm meeting new friends like all of you. So this is pretty standard. This is what I wear when I leave my house. And we've talked about some differences. I think there's another major difference about what I am wearing compared to what you all wear. Let's see if that comes through. Yes, I'm wearing gloves. Now tell me, when is the time that you all wear gloves? When do you all wear gloves? Nice job, yeah, when it's cold out during the winter. See, this is something that's also a little bit different is I wear my gloves all year round. So I, again, I wear these gloves when I'm going out to run errands or maybe meet new friends. And I wear these gloves in the spring, the summer, the winter, and the fall. So my hands are nice and toasty all year round. So that's something also a little bit similar that we still wear gloves, but I just wear them uh, throughout the year compared to when you all wear them. Now we've talked about some differences about what I am wearing. Now let's talk about some similarities. So remember the word similar means what is the same? So what is something similar about what I am wearing compared to what you all are wearing? Nice job, yeah, I'm wearing like a little jacket today to keep me nice and warm. It's fall here in Maryland, so the weather is starting to get a little bit cooler, starting to get a little bit chilly. So this keeps me nice and warm. And you can see my sleeves here. 
There we go. They lost some of their fluff here, but this sleeve, it has maybe a funny name. These are called leg o mutton sleeves, meaning whoever designed these thinks that these puffy sleeves that come down and they're a little bit uh, tighter around the wrist, people think this looks like a leg of lamb. Do you think this looks like a leg of lamb? Tell me in the chat if you think my sleeves look like legs of lamb. Mm, I'm seeing some no's, maybe a few yeses. But that's a good similarity that we still wear jackets. I think I saw also in the chat, someone said it's also fall in 2021. That's wonderful. And I also saw that someone said that you also wear white shirts in 2021. Maybe not all the time. But that's also something that is similar, that we all wear shirts. And like I said, I'm wearing a long skirt. It might be hard to see, but maybe some of you also wear long skirts. So those are a few similarities. Now, sometimes uh, when I am out and about running errands, I like to go to the store to pick up different things that I need. So I usually go to what is called a general store which means you can get just about anything you want there. So if I need to pick up ingredients like flour and sugar, I can get that at the general store. If I need to pick up uh, bolts of fabric to make me a new jacket, I can buy that there as well. I can buy new shoes at the general store. Sometimes I can even buy candy at the general store. So tell me, are there stores like that in 2021 where you can get all sorts of items that you might need? Ooh, I'm seeing some yeses come through in the chat. Wonderful. Tell me, what are the names of your stores in 2021? So like I said, my store is just called a general store. What are some names of stores in 2021? Ooh, I'm seeing something called a Walmart come up. Nice job. Seeing a lot of Target. Hmm, that's an interesting name for a store. I'm seeing like maybe a Kroger's. That sounds like a person's name. It sounds like you all have a lot of different stores in 2021. But sometimes I'm too busy and I can't go to the store to get what I want. So sometimes I have to order them. So tell me in the chat, are you still able to order things in 2021? Oh, I'm seeing lots of yeses. So if you could quickly uh, describe to me, how do you order something in 2021? How would you order something in 2021? I'm seeing some very interesting answers. Somebody put on the phone. So I know how to make a telephone call. A telephone is great big. It's a box that hangs on the wall. It's about this big by that big. And you talk into one piece and you listen with the other. Is that how telephones work in 2021? Hmm, I'm seeing lots of no's. So tell me, how do you order something off of your telephone in 2021? Oh, I see someone put, this is another word I'm unfamiliar with. You can order something from an app or something from, ooh, here's an interesting word, online. Someone said you can order something from on the line. What does online mean? You all have some very different words than I'm used to in 1895. What does online mean? Ooh, someone says that you can go online using your telephones. That's very interesting. Oh, and someone says this is a part of technology. Very interesting. So it sounds like you can use your telephones to go online and order something. 
Sounds like you have some amazing technology. I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around it. So this is something a little bit different because if I want to order something, I order something off of a catalog. So this is a picture of a catalog. Uh, can somebody tell me what is a catalog? And it's okay to take a guess. We're gonna learn all together, but what do you think is a catalog? Mm, yeah, it's kind of like a book. That's a good guess. You're on the right track. Yeah, it's like a magazine that you might want to open it up and circle the things you are interested in buying. So this is a cover of a catalog. And real quickly in the chat, please tell me what year was this catalog printed? So look on the cover of my catalog and tell me what year was this printed? Nice job, yes, 1895. So like I said, that's the year I'm visiting you all from. So this is a brand new catalog. This has the latest and greatest things that I could purchase out of here. So when I so order something out of the catalog, I have to fill out a piece of paper. I have to write down all the items that I would like. And then I have to send that piece of paper in the mail to a store. In this case, I would send it to the Montgomery Ward Company. And then the Montgomery Ward Company would send me the items I've asked for back through the mail. So I want you to take a look at the front of this catalog and tell me in the chat, what are some things based on the cover that you could buy out of this catalog? What are some things you could buy out of this catalog? Ooh, yes, someone has pointed out some hats. Again, there is that baseball cap that we described. Nice job. Oh yes, someone said a suitcase. Well done. In 1895, we like to just call these suitcases valises. So that's a different word for a suitcase. Yes, someone pointed out shoes. You can buy new shoes, wonderful. And maybe some new clothes as well. We have, yes, someone pointed out glasses, excellent. We have a piano here, good observation. And last one, yes, a bicycle, well done. So you can order a lot of different things out of this catalog. Just put a yes or no. Can you also order a lot of different things from your telephones on the line? Oh, I see. In the chat, I've been corrected. It's just called online. Yeah, but you can. It seems like you can order a lot of different things from online. So I actually brought my catalog with me and I would love to share some items with you that I'm thinking about buying. So here's my catalog. And I want you to tell me in the chat, just put a yes or a no, if you enjoy playing with toys. Oh good, I'm seeing lots of yeses. So I have a page here full of interesting toys and I'm thinking about maybe buying some of these to share with my students because like I said, I am a school teacher. So I want you to tell me in the chat, what are some items that you recognize? Oh yes, nice job. So in the middle here, we have a spinning top. Well done. Yes, and we have a dollhouse. Ooh, and someone's pointed out this train. Wonderful, so this train is really special because it is made out of metal. Typically, toy trains are made out of wood. So this is a really special item that I'm thinking about buying. So can somebody tell me what materials are your toys, like a toy train, what are uh, toy trains made out of in 2021? All right, some are saying wood, some are saying metal, but I'm, I'm coming across a new word. What is plastic? Tell me in the chat or describe to me in the chat, what is plastic? I don't know what that is.
When I see lots of people are typing, this is maybe a tough one to define. Oh, someone has described plastic can be hard. Well done. Ooh, and it sounds like it can be very colorful too, but I also see that someone else has put that it is clear. That's very interesting. Oh, and someone else has said, plastic is not easily broken. So it sounds like it's a little more durable than glass. So with this metal train, if I were to buy this for my students, if they played with it and accident accidentally dropped it, it might break. But it sounds like toys made out of plastic, they are not as easy, easily broken. So I also brought some other uh, toys with me that I wanted to share with you. These are some of the favorite toys my students like to play with. So let's see if we all recognize these. Tell me in the chat, what are these? Oh, rolling away. Oh, it still wants to roll, uh-oh. Nice job, yes, these are marbles. So let's put in the chat some description words. How would you describe a marble? Think about how you would describe what it feels like, its shape, its color, its texture. Ooh, I see someone has already said marbles are round. Nice job. Oh, I saw another word come through that also means round. Someone described marbles as spheres. That's a good word. Yes, someone has said they are made out of glass or maybe clay. These are definitely made out of glass. Nice job. They're hard, they're smooth, they roll around. And my students during recess, they love to play with marbles and it gets very competitive. So during recess, out in the dirt, my students will draw three circles, like a target, and then they will try and flick their marbles at each other to bump each other's marbles out of that target. And if you win, if your marble bumps another marble out of the target, they get to keep those marbles. So it gets very competitive very quickly. So tell me in the chat, does that sound like a fun game? Tell me yes or no if that sounds like a fun game. Ooh, I'm seeing some yeses, seeing some no's coming through. Yeah, well done. So we're gonna move on from our marbles and I'm gonna show you another item. Let's see if we recognize. Tell me, what is this? Oh, I see the chat is already flying. Yes, well done, this is a doll. So this doll is made out of porcelain. So her face and her arms are made out of porcelain, which is like a really hard glass. And then her tummy and her legs and her upper arms here are made out of cotton with some stuffing in the middle. So she has a squishy middle. So tell me, what are dolls made of in 2021? What are dolls made out of in 2021? Ooh, I'm seeing that word again. I'm seeing plastic come through. Oh, maybe some of your dolls are made out of cloth. Maybe you also have some porcelain dolls as well. So that's a little bit similar, but it sounds like most of the dolls in 2021 are made out of plastic. So let's look at this doll and think about dolls in 2021. How is this doll different? Besides what it's made out of, how are dolls different? Here, I'll show you our hairstyle here too. Oh, I see someone has already pointed out dolls have different clothing in 2021. They have bright, bold clothes to wear. That's very exciting. My doll just has this one outfit that she wears. It's all white. Oh, and someone else has pointed out that you can style dolls' hair. So this doll, her hair is just in the same hairdo because this is also made out of porcelain, but that's very exciting that 
If you're playing with a doll, you can style its hair. Nice job. I think we have time for one more toy to share with you all. Let's see if we recognize this. First of all, just tell me what shape is this? Or what is this made to look like? Hmm. What is this made to look like? Oh, well done. Yes, it's made to look like a bird or maybe a chick. Now tell me in the chat, your guess, what do you think this little bird or chick does? Hmm, it doesn't chirp or cheep. That's a good guess. Yes, you can, you can just play with it however you'd like. But this is also a wind-up toy. So tell me in the chat, do you have wind-up toys in 2021? Ooh, I see some yeses coming through. That's very exciting that this is still a toy that you all have. Now, this wind-up toy, it comes with a key. You take the key and you put it here under the little chick's beak. You give it a twist or two. And it's going to hop around. <laughs> so while this chick is hopping around, tell me what other shapes uh, do you have for your wind-up toys? Are they all bird shaped or do they come in different shapes? Oh, I see someone has said that they have a wind up toy that's in the shape of a bunny. That's very smart because bunnies hop around. Ooh, and they also come in the shape of teeth. Oh my goodness. That seems very strange that you have teeth chomping around. <laughs> Yeah, I'm seeing lots of animals come through. So that still seems to be quite popular. That's very exciting. Well, now that I've shown you some of these toys, my friends, I would also like to share with you some photographs that I've brought with me. So do you all still take photographs or maybe you call them pictures? Tell me in the chat. Oh, good, I'm seeing lots of yeses come through. So I brought some photographs I would love to share with you all. So this is a photograph of my friends and I earlier this summer, and we all went on a bicycle ride. So here I am, here are all of my friends, and here's my bicycle. And I love to ride my bicycle, not only in the summertime with friends, but this is sometimes how I also get to school. So tell me in the chat if you enjoy riding your bicycle, and where do you ride your bicycle? Where do you ride your bicycle if you ride a bicycle? Oh, I see some people ride their bicycles to school. That is something similar to my students. Some of my students ride their bicycles to school as well. Well done. Oh, some people ride their bicycles to their friend's house. That's excellent. Maybe you go on family bike rides as well. So I love to travel by bicycle. This is how I like to get around, especially in those warmer months. And sometimes I even get to travel to big cities. So like I said, I'm a school teacher in Maryland and I teach out in the suburbs. So it's very special if I get to visit Baltimore, Maryland, which is a great big city. So here we can see a picture of Baltimore. You can see this huge building with one, two, three, four, five floors. That is an enormous building. Now, are there buildings in 2001 that are as big as this one? Are there buildings that are even bigger than this one? Tell me in the chat. Oh my goodness, there are buildings that are even taller than this. Oh, I can hardly imagine that. That is amazing. Now, another way I like to travel and get around is by carriage. So you can see in my photograph here, there are a couple carriages. Here's a smaller one. Here's a larger one. 
So tell me, how do you all get around in 2021? Besides riding a bicycle, how else do you get around? Oh, I see lots of people putting a very interesting word in the chat. I see the word car. And that's a new word for me. Can someone describe to me what is a car? Hmm. What is a car? Ooh, someone has said it has four wheels. Very interesting. There's a driver or someone who has to push something called pedals. Hmm. Someone has said that there is an engine. Can someone tell me in the chat, um, how many horses does it take to pull your cars? So for this longer carriage, takes a couple of horses. For the smaller carriage, it also takes about two horses. How many horses does it take to pull your cars? Hmm. I'm seeing a lot of zeros or none. So if you don't have horses, how do your cars move? How do your cars move if your horses aren't pulling it? Oh, again, I'm seeing the word engine come up. I'm seeing the word machine. Oh, I got it. Your cars are machines. I think I know what a car is. I think I just have a different word for it. Are cars also sometimes called automobiles? Maybe that's a word we've heard before. Yeah, I know what an automobile is. You have to be very, very wealthy to have an automobile to drive around. They are the newest thing in all the rage. So hopefully one day I'll be able to afford an automobile. I think they would get me around a lot faster to where I need to go. So when I'm teaching school, like I said, in the nicer, uh, warmer months, I like to ride my bicycle, but typically I'll also walk to school. And after a long day of teaching and walking to and from school, I have to go home and I have to take care of some chores at home. So I wanna show you a couple other things out of my catalog here to talk about some chores that I have to do at home. In the meantime, tell me, do you like to do chores? Hmm, do you like to do chores? Well, I'm seeing a few yeses, but mostly no's. Sometimes, it's kind of tough to get motivated to do chores. And one of the chores I have to do deals with this. So if you see this item I'm pointing at, somebody in the chat tell me, what is this? It's not anything used in the kitchen. That's a good guess though. Oh, someone got it. Yes, this is an iron. Well done. And can somebody tell me what does an iron do? What does an iron do? Yeah, it presses out all those wrinkles out of your clothes. But the first thing you have to do to take care of your clothes before you start pressing out the wrinkles is you have to wash your clothing. So I'm curious to know if we recognize this item. So it might be a little difficult to see, but let's start out with, can somebody tell me what do we think this item is made from? What do we think this item is made out of? Yes, it's wood here on top and on the sides. And how about in this middle piece? You can see it's kind of bumpy and it has ridges. Oh, it's not made out of plastic. I can kind of see my hand through it. Yeah, nice job. This is made out of glass. So I'm curious to know, do we know what this is that I'm going to show you? Here's, here's the whole thing. What is this? Oh, it's not, it's not a musical instrument, but that's a good guess. Yeah, 
yeah, this is for washing your clothes. This is called a washboard. I'm guessing you all don't have washboards in 2021. So when I wash my clothing, I have to fill up a tub full of hot soapy water. I put my board in that tub and then I scrub out all of the dirt and grime out of my clothes on this ridged area here on my washboard. And then when I finish washing up every single item of my clothing, I have to hang them out to dry. So is that similar or is that different to how you wash and dry your clothing? Tell me, is that similar or is that different? Oh, I'm seeing lots of different come through. Interesting. So if you don't use a washboard, how do you clean your clothing? How do you clean your clothing if you don't use a washboard? Hmm. Oh, I'm seeing the words, a washing machine. You all have a washing machine, like a machine that does all of your laundry? Oh my goodness, you all are fortunate. I would love to have a machine that would do my laundry for me instead of having to scrub each individual piece. You all are very fortunate. So can somebody tell me what makes these machines work? What makes these machines work? I see someone has said you press buttons. Nice job. Someone else has included, you have to add soap. That's a good idea. You want your clothes nice and clean. But what makes your machines go? Oh, I'm seeing a word I recognize. You all have electricity. Now, just tell me quickly, yes or no in the chat. Do you have electricity at your home and at your schools? I'm seeing lots of yeses. Oh my goodness, you all are so fortunate because in 1895, not everybody has electricity. Actually, most people don't. You have to be very, very wealthy to have electricity. So when it starts to get dark out at night, uh, I have to light candles or maybe a little lantern or a lamp so I can see in the dark. But you all are so, so fortunate to have electricity. Now, my friends, I know we are running a little bit low on time. So I think now would be a great time to open it up for any questions that you might have, because we've talked about a lot of different things that are similar and different. So you are welcome to ask me any other questions you might have about my life in 1895. And Miss Watkins, I know you've been keeping up with this new technology of a chat really well, um, but we've been pulling out questions throughout for you. So um, let's, uh, you know, I, I'm reading a computer screen. has got to be just stressful on you as well. Uh, all all kind of new. So why don't uh, I'll interview you with a few of the questions people uh, have been asking. Um, please, everyone, keep the questions coming. Also, we're going to give everybody an opportunity to get a picture with Ms. Watkins here in, uh, in just a second. So uh, if you do that, put it up on Instagram. We'll have to teach her about that. You'll be entered to win a spot in an after-school club here with Varsity Tutors. But let's get to a couple of these questions first, then we'll pause for a picture so you guys can uh, can come up with some more questions, and then uh, and we'll get back to those. Uh, one really big one, Ms. Watkins, is... People are fascinated by the hat. Um, obviously, it takes up a lot of on-screen real estate here for us here. Uh, and we know you wear it out. And all those, people want to know, one, do you really get to wear that in the classroom? And two, can kids wear hats in the classroom? Because oh. that's not necessarily our experience right now. That is a good question. So I will wear this when I'm going to school. And then when I'm teaching, I'll take it off. And I'll keep my hair in a nice bun. But because I'm meeting new friends, I like to keep my hat on. And then uh, in terms of my students wearing hats, they will wear hats to and from school, uh, both boys and girls, but they'll take off their hats in their classrooms because sometimes those hats can be a little bit distracting. That's a really good question. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's um, that's that's really good to know. And I wish I could have worn a hat in the classroom as a, as a kid. So that's that's top of all of our minds. Um, hey, another one you mentioned that uh, electricity is is around, but not all that common. So a lot of questions around how do you keep your food from going bad? We have these things called refrigerators. They run out of electricity. You just close the door and everything stays cold. Um, that may not be your experience. What do you do to keep your food from going bad? That is a really good question. And again, you, the technology you all have is amazing. I have something called an ice box, or sometimes they're called ice chests. So it's just like how it sounds. I have a chest or a box that I will put ice in to keep my food cold and from spoiling. And in order to keep that ice from melting, because it can get very hot in Maryland, especially in the summertime, I will pack sawdust around it and that sawdust will help soak up some of that moisture and it helps keep the ice from melting really, really fast. So I use something called an ice box or an ice chest to keep my food nice and fresh. That's a really good question. Yeah, for all, all of those uh, out here who, like me have a refrigerator, I think we sort of modeled that after the idea of the ice box. Rather than sticking in a new box of ice, we just use electricity to kind of make that for us over time. Um, you'll even, Miss Watkins, we even have these things on our refrigerators where you can press a button and it makes ice and ice comes out for your drink. Um, hopefully, My hopefully goodness, you get to spend some amazing. time here in 2021. It's fantastic. We have to get ice out of the local rivers. So I will go... In, um, and buy them from like the general store, but people will go out in the winter time and they'll carve out ice out of local rivers. So people in town can have ice for their ice chests. So that is amazing that you can press a button and have ice, that is incredible. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice here in 2021. Hey, as you were talking about food, keeping it cool, another thing people wanted to know is, is what kind of food do you eat? I'm imagining some of the things that uh, we take for granted. I don't know if you've ever heard about Hot Pockets and Lunchables and uh, you know Uncrustables, Go-Gurt. Um, I don't think all this stuff existed for you. What do you, what do you, what's, what's common for people to eat, especially for kids to eat? What kind of lunches you, do kids bring to school? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, you, you have some funny sounding food in 2021. Um, one of my favorite foods, I do love to eat chicken because I live in Maryland. I love some crab and some oysters as well. And uh, my students, they will bring a lunch pail to school. So it's usually a metal pail, maybe around this big around. And usually for their lunches, they'll just bring their leftovers that uh, they had the night before from dinner. So sometimes students will bring vegetables and fruit and chicken and maybe some beef. Not very often do they bring seafood into class, and I'm very grateful for that. Like, no matter how good that ice box is, that seafood is going to smell a little bit. So, um, yeah, I think we're all all very thankful for that. Um, hey, we're going to get to a bunch of people want to have questions about you personally. Um, Go for I it. Some trying to prove that you're from there and all those. Um, so as you as we're asking those guys, everyone, uh, reminder, uh, we're going to give you a chance while she's answering those while we're on full screen. If you guys want to get your picture with your teacher, uh, Miss Watkins from 1895, uh, that's that's kind of your shot to uh, to get those pictures while uh, while she's telling us about her story, and then we'll come back for one or two other what's it like in 1895 questions. A um, couple here, they want to know how old are you? When were you born? I think maybe even trying to, to test out that timeline a little bit. Oh, um, yes. Tell us about that. I am 29 years old and I was born in the year 1866. So I was born the year after the Civil War ended. That's a good question. Yeah, definitely. Okay, others uh, maybe trying to prove who's, who's the president right now. Uh, that would be Grover Cleveland. This is his second time as president. He was president a few years earlier, then there was a bit of a break, and now he is in his second term as president. And and still here in 2021, the only president that's ever done that um, thus far. Oh my far. goodness, so, that's yeah, a fun still, fact um, I just learned. Exactly. We're on to, uh, we're, we're into the, you know, 40 some presidents at this point, but oh your president goodness. still has kind of that record. Um, hey, one other huge uh, set of questions here relates to our outhouse is really a thing. I think we talked about refrigeration and all that. People want to know, can you tell us what is going to the bathroom like in 1895? Yes, we do have outhouses. Um, most people actually have outhouses. Again, you have to be very wealthy if you have any indoor plumbing. So um, my schoolhouse, for example, does not have a bathroom in it. Instead, there is an outhouse. So if you have to use the restroom during school, you have to ask me to use the outhouse. Typically at homes too, you have to use the outhouse, um, which means you have to go outside if you need to use the restroom 
And uh, that gets kind of tricky when it's in the middle of the night or cold out. Yeah, for those who've been out camping a decent amount, you may have seen some that are a little bit like that. And, uh, and that's just, you know, uh, almost every day is like camping in, uh, in 1895, at least to, uh, to some extent. Um, you mentioned your schoolhouse. I think we have a lot of questions about just sort of what is a school day like? Um, you know, what's how many how many students are in your class? Uh, you know, what, what kind of things do you do to learn? I guess they're, they're probably not asking you if they can use a calculator on the test. That's a machine we have that does math for us uh, here in 2021. But what um, can you tell us uh, what's, what's a typical day in the classroom like for, for the students in your class? Good question. So the school day starts promptly at seven o'clock in the morning. So I have to get there early to make sure my class is all set up. I teach in a one room schoolhouse. I have about 12 students that uh, their age range. Uh, my youngest student, I believe is six years old. My oldest student is about 14 and we're all in the same classroom. So when I'm teaching a six year old how to read and write, I'm also teaching a 14 year old how to read and write. So there are actually um, some families where they go to school with their siblings. So tell me in the chat, would you want to go to school with your brothers or sisters? Would that be maybe kind of fun or would that be a little different? <laughs> I think it would be fun for a little bit and then maybe get old. I think we're seeing some uh, some commentary in, in and around that. So um, that uh, that's great. You mentioned you're baseball fans. We get back to you. What uh, what teams are, are competitive? Who's who's in the World Series in, uh, in 1895? Uh, I'm not sure quite who was in the World Series. I know they are wrapping up their season right about now, but I do love the New York Yankees. They are a big team up in New York. But since I'm from Maryland, I'm also a huge Babe Ruth fan because he was uh, born and raised here in Baltimore, Maryland. So that's why I like the Yankees, because I like Babe Ruth. Yeah, excellent. Well, and for everybody out there asking that, um, I, that we blow our mind. She doesn't have ESPN or the Internet or any of those things to tell her actively what's going on. Word travels fairly slow in uh, in 1895 so um it's uh, you know it, it may you may find out who won the world series a month or two later by the time uh you know the the rumor mill makes it way down to uh, to where you live uh i think we've got time for a couple more one other big one is people want to know and i love the way this one was phrased people want to know like i mentioned about the hat and all those kind of things uh but the the, the question i love the way it's phrased why do you dress so fancy oh i'm so glad you think i'm dressed fancy this is just what i wear every day so maybe it's a little bit different than what you all dress like today, but I'm glad that you think I'm fancy. This is what most ladies wear in 1895. Excellent. And then speaking of other things that, uh, that may be a little bit different, people want to know about toys. Um, so, uh, you know, one, one person asked, did they have Barbies? Did they have video games? Um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the, the toys that uh, the kids maybe in your, your classroom play with that you played with, uh, you know, maybe back in the 1870s or so? So I'm, I'm not sure what a, you said a Barbie. I don't know what that is. I have, I don't know. You said another funny word too, a vi vi video game. I have no idea what that is. Um, but like I, sh like I showed you my students, they like to play with dolls and doll houses. They play with wind up toys and spinning tops and marbles. So um, those are typically what my students will play with maybe at home. Now at school, uh, they have recess, so they love to play tag. Sometimes they play hide and seek. But like I said, sometimes they also bring their marbles to school and play marbles as well. So there's a lot of different games that they can play. They love to jump rope. Uh, they have a ball and cup toy where it's a cup and a ball on a string that you try and like scoop it up and try and catch the ball in the cup. That's a very difficult game. I am no good at it, but my students are very talented with that game. Awesome. So I think for those of us here in 2021, we have a lot of those toys too. Kids weren't that different. Uh, they, we may have access to a few more things than they did, but uh, but all in all, um, people are the same across time and place, which is uh, is really cool to know. Um, hey, last question for you, for everybody else out there, we'll put her full screen on uh, while Miss Watkins answers your uh, your final question here. So if you want to get those pictures to uh, to get up on Instagram, have a chance to win a spot in an after school club with Varsity Tutors um, on all kinds of things. We have classes on space exploration, that's a thing we do in, uh, in 2021, all kinds of uh, exciting science projects. Animation, it's drawing, but we can turn it into movies is something you may learn about soon. Ms. Watkins, so all kinds of fun things uh, you could win a chance to do if you put that picture up on Instagram. So last chance there, 
Last question for you. We've talked a lot about our technology. Video games, it's going to be hard to explain. We talked about microwaves and, and uh, refrigerators and all those kind of things. What is the, the cutting edge technology? What are the, the new devices, appliances that you're most excited about in 1895 that are kind of that cutting Ooh. edge? I really love the telephone because I'm able to call my family very quickly. I kind of described the telephone earlier that I speak into one piece and listen with my ear in another piece. That's a really nice way that I am able to connect with my family and friends. I love to see plays like at a theater and some of the things they do on that stage, I have no idea how they do it, but it looks like people are maybe floating on a boat or flying in the sky. And um, again, electricity, I think it's gonna be big. I'm excited to see more and more places using electricity and hopefully everyone will get electricity soon because it sounds like it is very handy to have in 2021. It absolutely is. That's how everyone's watching this right now. So uh, rest wow. assured, we will keep the electricity flowing for, uh, for the next hundred and some odd years. As a theater fan, you'll also be happy to know our most popular play right around now is about Alexander Hamilton um, oh. from a hundred years prior to you. So uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Thank you so much, Ms. Watkins. Thanks to all of you out there for your participation, for helping her along with the technology, introducing her to, uh, to chat. We're going to make sure she gets to see your Instagram photos and, and just kind of her mind blown by social media here in a little bit. So, uh, so make sure you get those pictures up there on the way out. We, uh, we will have those official instructions for uh, for who to tag and all those kind of things. So with that, uh, huge thanks to Miss Watkins. Huge thanks to uh, to all of you out there. We'll leave you with those contest rules. And uh, Miss Watkins, will, I'll say we'll see you in the future. Maybe we'll see you in the past, but we hope to see you again. So thanks, everyone. Thank you all so much.
All right, Mr. Galvin, are we still waiting for people to head on out?